I am Lamont at Large. Today, I am at the Tyler Memorial Cemetery here in Tyler, Texas. I'm here to visit the grave of David Koresh. When I tell you the name David Koresh, some very vivid descriptions of him are going to run through your mind. Some of those being crazy man, insane, loco, cuckoo for cuckoo puffs, just a vicious, horrible, child abusing weirdo who thought that he was the son of God. But other people will refer to David Koresh as simply the Messiah. The choice is up to you on whether you want to believe or not believe. But in the spring of 1993, one of the biggest absolute news stories on TV was the siege of the Branch Davidian compound in Mount Carmel, right outside of Waco, Texas. So the Branch Davidians, they were basically an offshoot of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Now, a lot of people would call them a cult, a bunch of cultists. And I will say this, not defending them, but in my own personal opinion, if you call them a cult, then you also must call the Church of Scientology a cult, and you must also call the Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, you must also call them a cult as well. And many people do. So, David Koresh, he was originally from Houston, Texas, and if you talk to people that knew him personally, there was two things that he loved in this world. He loved the Bible, and he loved music. He loved playing guitar. He absolutely had the look and the personality. He could have easily had gone away from the Bible and just absolutely became a rock star. He had the look, he had the personality. But when he was a little boy, he told his parents that God appeared to him and told him that he was the chosen one. He was the Messiah, the last Messiah, the one that was going to bring the word of God to the world. There's several articles and TV programs available on YouTube for you to kind of refresh your memory about uh, David Koresh and who he was. There was a power struggle to be the leader of the church that he eventually won. And the Branch Davidian compound was a place where people looking to find the answer to life's questions would often go. People from all around the world flocked to Mount Carmel because they absolutely believed either that David Koresh was the son of God or, excuse me, the Messiah, that uh, that word often gets uh, misconstrued with the son of God. You ask somebody, you ask some people, is that, does that mean the son of God? Some people say yes, some people say no. But there was one thing apparent. People flocked to him because they either believed he was or they sure as hell hoped he was. Now, the things that went behind closed doors and those walls at the Branch Davidian compound, uh, one of many things, uh, David Koresh was a very, very stern disciplinarian. Almost people would even say very vicious, maniacal, evil, and twisted. People would often bring their children to him to spank, and his beatings were very, very known to be very, very vicious. And he would also instruct the parents of the children to beat their kids mercifully. Often to the point where there was blood spilled. David Koresh ruled that compound with an iron fist. He would tell people what to eat, what not to eat. You couldn't mix certain foods together. 
He would tell people who to marry, when to have kids. Women were subjugated to wearing long dresses covering the buttocks area. What hairstyles they could and could not have. Absolutely no makeup. What music they could listen to. What TV shows they could watch. Which was basically none. There was no power and there was no running water at that place. Just a, in my opinion, miserable existence. So the ATF... When they laid siege to the compound, uh, they had a couple warrants out for David Koresh's arrest. Uh, two things being uh, accusations of child abuse, which was going on at that place. And also uh, weapons violations. Uh, it was very well known that the Branch Davidians were very, very well heavily armed. So when the ATF went to conduct the search warrant and uh, to arrest David Koresh, a firefight ensued. Each side points the finger of blame at the other in terms of who fired first. But in the ensuing firefight, four ATF agents and six members of the Branch Davidian were killed. And so began the infamous... Negotiations between the Branch Davidians and the government, the uh, ATF. And every day, if you remember, as I do, every day it was all over the news, all over the TV. What are they going to give themselves up? What's going on? And what are they doing? For almost two months, everyone was holding their breath and waiting for the agents of the ATF to go in there and just, you know, bring everything to an end. Which it finally did. And here we are at the grave of David Koresh. In his father's hand is inscribed on the stone. Has been long ago vandalized so many times. No longer is there anybody here to care enough to clean his stone. He is buried next to his stepfather, Roy Haldeman. And his mother right here is Bonnie Sue Haldeman. So on April 19th, 1993... Uh, then Janet Reno, who was the U.S. Attorney General and the head of the FBI, uh, basically made that day the day of reckoning, the day that they were going to bring David Koresh to justice. And they had a some kind of a battery ramming uh, vehicle that they used to pretty much cave in the wall of the Branch Davidian compound, making holes in it so they can basically smoke them out. They're basically threw tear gas in there so they would come out. And some of them did come out. Some of them gave up, but uh, David Koresh, including 79 other people, uh, died after a fire was started. Each side says the other side started the fire. Who knows? Who knows, you believe what you want to believe. There's plenty of conspiracy videos on YouTube you can go watch. But uh, 79 people, including David Koresh, uh, all lost their lives. Now, there is speculation on how he, David Koresh here, lost his life. Some say that he took his own life. Some say that another gentleman with the last name of Schneider, I believe, finally realizing that David Koresh was nothing but a charlatan and a fraud, uh, pulled out the gun and shot him in the head and then t turned around and, you know, took his own life. Other people say that uh, David Koresh instructed that man to shoot him. 
who knows what the truth is uh david koresh took the truth to his grave and we're never really gonna know we're really never gonna know what happened so but again you know plenty of videos on youtube plenty of articles online you could read plenty plenty of uh hour-long specials documentaries they made about this guy and his life so i would advise you to go look him up go read it go watch some videos and come up with your own truth because you know everybody has an opinion you know um as i do as i do anyways coming to you from the tyler memorial cemetery here in tyler texas thank you for watching my video i hope you learned something and uh god bless take it easy peace out